Grace and peace you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we have done in previous years, we keep in the first Sunday in September as Sea Sunday. Down south they do it in July, which doesn't really work for us. Uh, so we're doing it when hopefully things are pretty much uh, underway on this side of the border. Our preacher this morning is Nigel. Uh, Nigel is a volunteer with Mission to Seafarers and does a great job in promoting um, this charity uh, around Scotland. There's a plate at the back of the church where the magazines are, specifically a collection plate for Mission to Seafarers. If you wish to support this charity, uh, please put money in the back there and we will, we will get that money to them. On the back of the service sheet we have the hymn numbers um, as we would normally do. Um, just ignore those this morning please, um, but go with what's on the hymn board here. Uh, and as I normally do, I'll announce those hymn numbers uh, other than the communion hymn. So for the fourth hymn, if you want that hymn number, you've got to look at the board. So our introit hymn is 547, 547. God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness.
let us confess together. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to Let us pray. A collect for Sea Sunday. Almighty Father, creator of the oceans and land, whose sun sailed the seas and calmed the storms, anoint all seafarers with your Holy Spirit, that as it breathed over the waters of creation, so may you bring newness of life to them and us. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first lesson is found in the book of Jonah, reading in chapter 1 from verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea 
that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quieten down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quieten down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land. But they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Mr.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose and the waves beat into the boat so the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. The psalm is number 107.
The second reading is found in the Acts of the Apostles, reading in chapter 27 from verse 23. Paul said, Last night there stood by me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship, and he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor, and indeed God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we will have to run aground on some island. When the fourteenth night had come, as we were drifting across the Sea of Adria, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land. So they took soundings and found twenty fathoms. A little further on they took soundings again and found fifteen fathoms. Fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape from the ship and had lowered the boat into the sea on the pretext of putting out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the boat and set it adrift. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our Redeemer, and the one who navigates us through life. Amen. Just over two years ago, I answered an advertisement in the Scots magazine for volunteers to help with the work of the Mission to Seafarers Scotland. In response, I was asked if I would coordinate the bookings for our chairman and chaplain, both of whom have been here to preach, to preach in churches and to speak to various organizations about the mission. Well, I was, of course, happy to do this, although I did not expect to find myself in this pulpit due, I might say, to Dom's encouragement, witnessed, as you may have seen, in this morning's pew sheet. Today we're celebrating Sea Sunday, which we have marked here in St. Michael's in recent years on the first Sunday in September. The sea has always played a significant role in history, both its challenges and its benefits. Like many of the peoples of the ancient Near East, the Hebrews of the Old Testament regarded the sea with great trepidation. It was a barrier, both feared and mysterious. For the Hebrews, paradise was a place where there was no more sea. Nevertheless, its conquest and the fixing of its limits were frequently used in Jewish devotion to mark God's supremacy over the natural order. And we find this divine supremacy over the natural order in today's Gospel. Jesus had set out with the disciples to cross Lake Gennesaret when suddenly a tremendous storm engulfed the boat, terrifying the disciples. The winds often sweep across Galilee, gathering speed as they approach the water's edge, causing violent storms on the lake. 
The disciples awoke the sleeping Jesus, who in response to their terror calmed the, the storm and assuaged the gale. Who can this be? the astonished disciples asked. Even the wind and the sea obey him. It was in his control of the storm. The disciples realized that Jesus was no ordinary rabbi, but one who could ensure their safety and calm their fear. Our reading from the Old Testament again focuses on the sea, this being Sea Sunday. The story of Jonah is primarily remembered by his being swallowed up and regurgitated by the whale three days later. Jonah was commissioned by God to preach repentance to the people of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, a place very much feared by the people of Israel. But instead of responding to God's call, he selfishly sailed in the opposite direction to Tarshish, a place possibly in southern Spain. The wicked city of Nineveh was not the place he wished to be in. The account is resonant with today's gospel. A storm blew up as Jonah was sleeping on board ship. The captain roused him. Get up, call upon your God. Perhaps he will spare us a thought and we shall not perish. The sailors then reluctantly decided to throw Jonah overboard since they knew he had disobeyed his God and thought the storm was God's retribution. And once overboard and swallowed by the whale, the storm abated. The sailors recognized that Jonah's God was no ordinary God. They feared him even the more, we are told, just as the disciples acknowledged Jesus was no ordinary rabbi, but one who had the elements under his control that were so much feared in the ancient world. It also teaches us that God is with us in our darkest moments, to guide us, whoever we are, or wherever we are. This morning's psalm speaks of God's compassion for those on the sea. When at our wit's end, in the thick of the storm, at rock bottom, he leads us out of the sea of our despair and distress as we sail through life. In the same way, as God manifest in Jesus, reached out to the incredulous disciples, and also the same God of Israel delivered the sailors from the storm on Jonah's boat, who belonged to a completely different faith tradition. The mission to seafarers embraces all seafarers, irrespective of faith, background, or ethnicity. Seafaring is one of the most dangerous occupations in the world. Seafarers run risks from piracy, shipwreck, and abandonment by unscrupulous ship owners, and can be away from home for up to nine months with little or no contact with their home, depending on the efficiency of the internet connections where they are. COVID-19 has been particularly difficult for the seafaring community. The scheduled changeover of crews was frequently cancelled or delayed due to government restrictions on foreign travel and the ever-changing quarantine regulations. Yet also 90% of the world's traded goods are transported by sea. Many governments are reluctant to recognize seafarers as key workers. Over 400,000 seafarers were stranded during the pandemic, including in our own Scottish ports, and many are still uh, 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 bound in ports abroad, virtually incarcerated for as long as 17 months, and certainly long after their contracts have expired. And seafarers often feel undervalued, taken for granted. Many are lonely, depressed, and occasionally even resort to the tragedy of suicide. Chaplains and others working for the mission during the pandemic were able to speak to seafarers from the top of the gangway. They weren't actually allowed to board ships. And there, though not always able to solve their problems, they were able to offer comfort and reassurance of God's love and ever-abiding presence. And this was particularly important when seafarers were away from home for long periods, worried about their families and the many other anxieties attendant on domestic life. 
The world we now inhabit is one of changing weather patterns, with seafarers having to face storms of increasing violence due to rising sea levels, problems the world seems to have difficulty in solving. Scientists now tell us that the rate of climate change is accelerating at a much quicker rate than was originally predicted. And so it is very much hoped and prayed for that the conference in Glasgow next November will find some way of addressing this serious problem. Since in the wake of Brexit, ships carrying essential supplies to our shores may have longer sea journeys to travel. The crews who serve on our lifeboats, sometimes at great personal risk, will also have to face the challenge of increasingly rough seas due to climate change. And indeed, on our south coast, they often have to deal with the tragedy of those fleeing across the channel from starvation and persecution. Another problem that can only increase with climate change, and one proving almost insoluble. It is in working with our seafarers, confronting the many problems they face, that the mission witnesses to the values and truths of the Gospel's teaching, that God's love, as Jesus said, may shine before men. However, in the world's treatment of God's creation and the suffering resulting from it, it has failed to witness to God's love, but abused it. Like Jonah, the world has steered a different course, not in the direction of compassion, but in the opposite direction of selfishness. In today's epistle, God sent his messenger, the angel, bringing words of reassurance to Paul that he and his ship's company would be safe. They were shipwrecked on the island of Malta, but the islanders showed them great compassion. In the Hebrew scriptures and in the New Testament, an angel really means one who is sent, a messenger. Those who work for the mission are sent, hence it is known as the flying angel, to give God's gift of love in the form of practical help. Mobile phones are topped up, SIM cards are supplied. Our centre in Grangemouth is always available to offer fellowship and its facilities to our seafarers. And during the pandemic, food parcels were delivered at the top of the gangway to seafarers beleaguered and unable to come ashore. And here in St Michael's, you knit caps and scarves for our seafarers, which are greatly appreciated. So please keep on knitting, as you know they like them in bright colours. However, like all charities, coronavirus has reduced the mission's income, so we are grateful for the financial support we receive from churches and from others. But above all, we ask you to commend the work of the mission in your prayers. In a way, we're all seafarers navigating our way through life's stormy seas of anxiety and worry, the treacherous turbulences of disappointment and failure. And it is in these storms of life, in our darkest hour, where there is nowhere else to go, that we begin to realize who Jesus really is, as the disciples were to discover on Lake Gennesareth. He was a satellite navigator who calmed their fear and brought them safely to shore. And it's also our sat now, as many of us were to realize during the anxious days of lockdown, but a sat nav isn't much use unless we trust in it. By trusting in God's loving wisdom, he will navigate us into calmer waters, not perhaps to the destination we expected or even desired. Jonah was ultimately to arrive in Nineveh, a destination he had originally run away from. But remember, Jesus taught us to pray, his will be done, and in the fullness of time, he will pilot us into his haven of eternal peace. This is the core of the mission's message, God's steadfast, loving care of all our seafarers and indeed of all of us. Whatever life may throw at us, including our anxiety over climate change, he is with us to guide us through turbulent times. As Jesus said to his disciples in the concluding verse of St. Matthew's Gospel, remember I am with you always, and I emphasize always, to the end of the age.
Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. These intercessions are in the form of a litany. I will say a short prayer and the response will be, In your mercy, Lord, hear us. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. There will be a number of silences for you to make your own petitions on the subject. Merciful and gracious God, we pray for the worldwide Christian church, especially for those living in countries where it is hard or forbidden to be a Christian. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. We pray for our Scottish Episcopal Church, our Primus Mark, for our Diocese of Glasgow and Galloway, and our Bishop Kevin. We also pray for our own church here at St Michael's, and our Rector Dom, Lay Reader Kevin, and all who worship here. In your mercy, Lord, hear yes. us. Although Helensburgh is a naval base this Sea Sunday, we pray not only for the Royal Navy, but also for the merchant navies of the world and the one and a half million seafarers engaged in international shipping. They keep us supplied with produce and raw materials from around the world and export our produce and pay for it. They have been facing great difficulty since the advent of COVID. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear us. us. In particular, we pray for the men and women who, because of COVID restrictions imposed by national or port authorities, have not been allowed to step ashore for a break or exercise for many months, in at least one case for 18 months. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear us. us. These restrictions on getting ashore or on board and the unavailability of flights to or from ho their homelands makes cruise changes very difficult. This has also resulted in hours of work on board having to increase to cover crew shortages and much longer intervals between opportunities to visit their families. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. Hear us. We pray for the seafarers who have been marooned on ships, abandoned by owners in financial difficulties. 
often left without food or fuel and without pay. We also pray for their families who have lost, for the time being, their principal breadwinner. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. We pray for the work of the missions to seafarers and their worldwide physical, mental and spiritual support to, su to seafarers who are suffering despite restrictions on their access to ships. Bless their ways of using modern technology to help seafarers keep in contact with their families, such as prepaid mobile phones and old methods like buckets on the ends of ropes to deliver toiletries books and other literature to isolated crews. In your mercy, Lord, hear yes. us. We pray for fishermen, often facing great risks in their work. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. We pray for lifeboat crews as they keep people working or enjoying the sea safe. Thank you, Lord, for their selfless courage. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. We pray for our families and friends, those who mean so much to us. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear us. us. We pray for the sick in body, mind or spirit and for all who care for them. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear us. us. We pray for those who have died recently and those who grieve for them. In your mercy, Lord, hear yes. us. Lastly, we pray for ourselves, that we may ever draw nearer to you and do what you want us to do. O God of unchangeable power and love, look favourably on these our prayers today. Amen.